कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, head teacher and teacher sacked for corporal punishment. Police beef up surveillance in Nausori. And Thambuya relies on financial backers in leadership bid. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Speight. Education Ministry has terminated a school head and a teacher for physical assault on a pupil at a Nandi special needs school. Education Minister Rosie Akbar confirms the terminated teacher inflicted corporal punishment on a student, which is unacceptable. She adds the head of school, instead of protecting the student, decided to protect the guilty teacher. Akbar says any official who fails in their responsibility to bring evidence to the attention of the Human Resource Department will also be taken to task. The minister has reminded teachers that they are paid by taxpayers to educate and keep safe the students under their charge. The Fiji police force is beefing up operations and surveillance in the greater Nausori, including the red zones or areas prone to crime. Senior officers met with the Nausori Chamber of Commerce last night where businesses complain about drug peddling, glue sniffing, theft and other criminal activity. Officer in charge of Nausori, a ASP Sunil Chand, says increased police presence since last week has led to 15 arrests. Josiah Nanunga has more. Police have also managed to apprehend seven people found drinking in public, four were drunk and disorderly, three were in possession of illegal substances, another three have been charged with theft and four people failed to comply with orders. Chief Operations Officer ACP Abdul Khan says they've also set up K-9 unit based in Rara Levo, covering the Greater Nosori and Nakasi areas. We have already deployed uh, the K-9 and we are thankful to our Darka Corporate Services and the team that have redo our dock canal in there. And uh, right now as we speak, Rara Levo, we have a small dock canal that is there that has been redone and we have a K-9 that is posted there with a handler out there as well. Special Administrator Nosori Uman Khan Patel says the Chamber of Commerce will also install an additional four cameras before the end of the month. You can see in a short time all the CCTVs are up. Uh, they have made the number of arrests. Uh, they are sharing data. We have formed a Viva group as well, which uh, we share information. Please feel free to join that Viva group. It's, uh, very fast and efficient medium. In the last seven days, police have installed nine CCTV cameras connected to the Eastern Division Command Center. Police will also install security cameras near the Agro Marketing Office, Brown Lane, Ratu Dagombo Park, TFL Tower, and the Del Kusha area. Shosaye Nanunga, FBC News. A 48-year-old police sergeant based in Nambua Suva was remanded in custody by the Nausori Magistrates Court on Wednesday. Sunita Devi allegedly stole groceries amounting to $30 from Max Value Supermarket in Nausori on the 1st of this month. Chief Operations Officer ACP Abdul Khan says the force will not condone such unethical acts and will not entertain dirty cops. He reiterates no one is above the law and those found guilty will be held accountable. So if there was issues been raised that police officers are involved in certain illegal activities and all those, so if you're on the other side of the fence, you'll be taken to task. So we don't mean our words here. We mean business here. Let us walk the talk. The Social Democratic Liberal Party's Nasinu constituency has endorsed Sitiveni Rambuka and Linda Tambuya as their nominees for party leader and deputy leader respectively. Speaking to FBC News, opposition whip Linda Thamboya also confirmed that the party's biggest financiers have given her their backing in writing. Koroi Tandulala reports. The opposition whip says the party's biggest constituency has made a calculated decision to see balance between young and old leading the party to the 2022 general election. Nasino feels that uh, this would be a good combination uh, to have him lead and have myself to compliment him because he's already gained traction from 2018 uh, you know he's appealed obviously to the older generation and also uh, the vanua base voters uh, with his majority votes from vanua base um, if i were to come in as his deputy leader then i would compliment his votes where i would be targeting the urban uh, vote 
Tambuya is up against Nikona Waikula, Filimoni Vosorongo, Aseri Ranronro, Piotamba Iwalu, and Moses Mbulitavu for the deputy party leader position. She believes her trump card is the backing of some of Sudelpa's largest donors. I'm unable to name them at this point because it's part of the process. I wish to respect the integrity of the process. However, I can confirm um, they were the same funders from the 2018 elections, and so they have um, asked me and also supported me in this quest. So I'm, I'm very happy to have, I'm very humble actually. Um, I believe our, our funders overseas uh, have been uh, asking for accountability back from our party for the last number of years. So Delpa's main financial backers are based overseas. The United States branch collected more than $200,000 in 2018, while Australian supporters donated over $27,000. Other candidates are keeping their cards close to their chest. Koreit Andulala, FBC News. Measures to stop the spread of the coronavirus seem to also be suppressing influenza. According to surveillance data from the Ministry of Health, heightened hygiene practices among the public, such as hand washing, has reduced influenza transmission in Fiji. Kritika Kumar reports. Health experts say we should not be complacent with COVID safety measures as it protects Fijians from other infections. The problem is that they will start to get tired of it and then people will become complacent. When that happens, and then uh, it's likely that our flu uh, season, uh, during the flu season, we start having a lot more cases. And uh, also, if they become complacent, it makes it difficult for us in our battle against COVID-19. Dr. Fong says before the pandemic, concerns about improper hygiene were commonplace. But this flu season, hospitals and health centers are reporting far fewer numbers than previous years. Definitely, COVID-19 has allowed us to promote plenty healthy behaviors that you know we've been trying to promote from long ago. And sanitization is not a new thing. Fiji Medical Association President Dr. Basharat Munshi says it's no surprise that COVID-19 control measures have limited the spread of the seasonal flu. Yeah, these measures are um, pretty much applied to the whole spectrum of respiratory acquired infectious diseases. If you know two people are wearing masks, one being um, someone who's got a respiratory illness, one being a vulnerable uh, person, um, then you know the chances of transmissibility is lowered quite a bit. Pigeons are being urged to keep practicing good hygiene to prevent a spike in the flu, which is common this time of the year. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Up ahead, returning Fijians want separate quarantine facilities and former lawyers requests readmission. By Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dhadkan. A meeting of the University of the South Pacific Council scheduled for Wednesday did not take place. Chair of the Council and President of Nauru, Lionel Anyamea, says they did not meet because they are expecting reports which have not yet been submitted to Council. If BC News understands, the meeting was supposed to review a report on allegations of misconduct against Vice Chancellor Professor Paul Alualia. In response to questions from If BC News, Anime says he will comment later to allow fair and due process of reviewing the reports. The Health Ministry recently received requests from individuals to replicate its COVID-19 quarantine facilities at other non-government sites. Permanent Secretary Dr. James Fong says their decision will be guided by strict criteria as their main facility will be on how far they want to spread their resources. Kelly Vavala reports. Fijians returning home have requested the health ministry to stay at villas, hotels and resorts of their choice at their expense during the 14-day quarantine period. There's supposed to be six hotels, although uh, we cut back on some hotels whenever we feel uh, that we don't need them. And uh, apart from that, there is another four uh, sites that are currently, alternative sites that are currently serving as quarantine sites that are currently being under operation. And we also have another two more that we are currently assessing. Military Commander Rear Admiral Vilamino Poto says when such requests are approved by the ministry, only then they deploy the soldiers. 
For example, there was a family that uh, came back and, uh, and they were quarantined at their own uh, villa in Pacific Harbor. Um, we also provide uh, uh, RSMAP personnel there to just for the quarantine uh, time of uh, duration of sorry of 14 days. So they're there, uh, and, and uh, we are thankful to those that we go and look after in that way, where they provide us food. Uh, and transportation also, and, and a place for, for them to stay. Now, Porto had earlier highlighted there are 47 military personnel stationed at various government quarantine facilities in the Western Division. Kelly Vatala, FBC News. A former prominent lawyer disbarred in 2012 is seeking to get readmitted to the bar. The application by Harun Ali Shah was strongly opposed by the Legal Practitioners Unit before Acting Chief Justice Kamal Kamar this morning. Apanisa Wangarindovu has more. Shah was disbarred by the Independent Legal Service Commission in June 2012 after he was found guilty of counts of unsatisfactory professional conduct. Shah was hired in the 1980s to process a third-party insurance claim for Shashi Lata, whose husband died in a road accident. In 2001, Tawa Insurance paid out $70,000, but Shah didn't tell his client until November 2003 after deducting $20,000 as legal fees. When he was disbarred, the commission found Shah had no permission to deduct any fee, failed to keep a proper trust account, and failed to keep proper records of transactions. Acting Chief Justice Kamal Kumar has ordered the Legal Practitioners Unit to file submission before the 25th of this month and Shah's lawyer to reply to the submissions by the 4th of next month. Afinis Wangarindovu, FBC News. The Suva Magistrates Court has set a pre-trial day for former Fijian Holdings Limited Chief Executive Norza Barid. The pre-trial will be on the 28th of next month. Barid's case was called in court for mention this morning. He is charged with three counts of indecent assault against two female employees of the FHL group. The prosecution says they have considered the representation made by the defense. However, they will be proceeding with the matter. The prosecution also said that one of the complainants is currently stuck in South Korea. Farid's bail has been extended until December 1st. And Whitney is here with the latest from the business world. Thanks, Jackie. In business tonight, rock market expands. And in growing Fiji, Village 6 opens food court. Stay with us. Radio Fiji One, Leading business, due to the reopening of the Republic of Cappuccino Cafe, the rock market organizers will be expanding this Sunday's event from Loftus Street in Suva. The vendors will be setting up stalls from the Lo Loftus along Carnivan Street to Gladstone Road. Coordinator Ilana Coloni Singer says the expansion was done to ensure engagement between the main partners. Coloni Singer says there is a lot more demand due to the pandemic as new vendors are looking for space to sell their items. This Sunday we have booked for 100 vendors, so it's going to be a big market with some beautiful handmade products and plants, food, a jumping castle for the kids. We've got um, live music and we have a DJ near the Rock Cafe. ANZ has announced it has introduced contactless payments to Fiji and six other Pacific countries with ANZ Visa debit and credit cards. Contactless payment is methods that securely transmits purchase information via tiny antenna embedded in the card. ANZ customers can tap and pay at a contactless payment terminal anywhere in the world without entering their PN4 transactions under the $50 limit. ANZ Fiji country head Saud Minam says contactless payment is increasing convenience for customers and reduces the risk of cash handling as a means of spreading COVID-19. Gary from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the money market. Australia's central bank called on every level of government to put all shoulders to the wheel to fund the spending desperately needed to generate jobs and drag the economy out of its deepest recession in about a century. Having slashed its cash rate to a record low of 0.25%, and implementing a bond-buying program in mid-March, Reserve Bank of Australia Governor Philip Lowe said 
there were limits to what monetary policy could do. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar drifted higher today, helped by strong U.S. jobs data, as well as firmer global demand for safe havens, setting the currency up to potentially snap a seven-week losing streak amid concerns about a coronavirus recovery. This week has also been a bad one for the formerly safe haven Japanese yen, which is headed for its biggest weekly drop against the U.S. dollar in two months, as a jump in U.S. yields is pulling flow from Japan. And that's all from HFC Bank for this week. Inaka. Looking at today's local exchange rates as set this morning, as the Chinese yuan and the U.S. dollar continue to fluctuate with market trends, our Fiji dollar showed gains against the currencies of our two major trading partners, rising against both the Aussie and the Kiwi dollars, but showing minor declines against the other currencies we cover. Looking at commodities, oil prices dropped a few cents but remain near the $42 a barrel mark. Gold continued to rise, reaching $1,951 per hour and silver rose as well, hitting 27.48 per ounce. In growing Fiji, Damoda Group of Companies has today opened its new plaza eatery at the complex formerly known as Village 6. The new Damoda Plaza Village 6 underwent a $1.3 million refurbishment and has combined cinemas, retail shopping and now Silver's newest eatery on the first floor. Lina Reese has more. new complex has allowed businesses like Sun Fryer Fish and Chicks to expand to another branch after years of operating out of Suva's Rara Street. We've opened up our new branch at uh, the Motor Plaza's new eatery and uh, what to expect from our new branch uh, we've branched out to fried chicken we have our own original fried chicken recipe and uh, also we've expanded on our burgers we've got a uh, new two new special burgers for vanga valeni kana head chef this new venture has allowed former hotel workers like herself to find new means of earning an income <laughs> We are so happy to be part of this restaurant because when working in hotels, we don't cook too many Fijian dishes. This new business has challenged us to focus on cooking and recreating authentic Fijian food. The Demoto Plaza is the smaller model of the sister brand Demoto City at Lodala Bay. Lena Reese, FBC News. <laughs> That's it from business tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thank you, Whitney, and good evening in sports tonight. Rewa football take on underdogs tag. And a sour rugby expect uphill battle. This and more after the break. My name is Neha, and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The Delta One Automotive Repairs Rewa side have declared themselves underdogs for their Punjas Battle of the Giants semi final clash against the Priceline Pharmacy Bar tomorrow. Rewa coach Marika Rondu says if there's a team that can change the course of a game, it's Bar. Akula Dama has more. Many are predicting Rewa will lift the BOG title this weekend, but the Delta Tigers believe Ba is the team to beat. They've uh, started to build uh, uh, a momentum after the two loss against uh, uh, Nandi and Nasin uh, in the league. So they've won uh, the remaining league uh, after that, and they've uh, built the team uh, in the in the first two games uh, in the BUG. The Men in Black is the most successful team in the competition history, winning the title 17 times, while Rewa is second with eight. With those uh, history behind them and uh, the way we play, they've got a good coach, uh, good management. They've just came back from uh, O-League. So they have this uh, much experience in them, uh, which uh, I think uh, uh, will carry them through in the same time. These Rewa players know they'll have to give their all against Mba. Uh, we respect them a lot, uh, but uh, we will stick to our game plan. What uh, the coaches have uh, planned for us to uh, play in the same fun. So we respect them and uh, we'll see game day what uh, might come. Rewa will play in by 2 p.m. tomorrow at Lotoka's Churchill Park. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports.
The all-in-one builders and undecideds ready for a tough super side in their BOG semi-final tomorrow. Despite being the only unbeaten team from uh, pool play, the Jet Setters believe it's anybody's game on match day. Felipe Nicasso has more. Keeping a low profile, the Nandi team are optimistic of their chances when they take the field tomorrow. Uh, as you see, all four teams are good team. They w they all work out uh, towards the semi-final, and uh, now one week is there, so all the teams must be preparing well for the semi-final, eh? because one week break. The players have been reminded that last week's performance in the tournament is history, but they should back it up. We cannot underestimate anything, so it's just we have to be mentally prepared towards the semi-final. Meanwhile, on the other side of the island, the Priceline Pharmacy in Bar side wants to prove critics wrong after their lackluster performance. It's a crucial match uh, for us because uh, I think it's been two or three years now since Bar hasn't won a tournament yet. And uh, the message to pass to the boys is uh, we need to lift this uh, cup. Despite a young side, the men in black are confident of doing well. Preparation has uh, been going on good and uh, we just need to patch up on our midfield and our striking force in order to finish up the game. Ba play the Delta One Automotive Repairs Rewos side at 2 p.m. tomorrow while Nandi meets Suva at 4 p.m. Philip and Aikaso, FBC Sports. The message is clear for the island accommodation flow valves uh, Suva team and that's the end of their 25-year BOG title drought. A day out from the semi-finals, uh, Suva football president Ritesh Pratap says the team has done all that it needs to prepare for the clash against all-in-one builders Nandi. He adds it's now up to the players to deliver for all those invested in Suva football. I think they've already spoken to the players and uh, whatever message we have to pass, we've already passed the message to the players. Uh, like for us officials, we, we have uh, done our part and it's, it's, it's up to the players now how they will be performing. So looking at the players' uh, body shape and their attitude uh, towards the game, I think we definitely we, we are there. Former Fiji Sevens captain Kalyoni Nasoko says he is grateful to be back playing rugby. Nasoko, who suffered a knee injury last year, took to the field again as a replacement for Yasawa in their Skipper Cup loss to Lautoka last week. Felipe Naikaso caught up with him and files this report. Back doing what he loves, Kalyoni Nasoko getting a taste of rugby again after being sidelined with an injury for more than a year. It's been so long and uh, doing uh, a surgery and uh, been following the uh, rehab uh, program and I'm so happy to be back uh, you know, playing against a lot of elastic been given uh, 30 minutes by a coach to play while the 27 year old is eager to get back on the field this week he has been advised to stick to the recovery plan uh, it's progressing this week for 60 minutes and uh, then we'll see from there I'm just following a protocol from uh, our physios and coaches for things to do progressing slowly. Yasawa, who are still winless in the Skipper Cup competition, desperately needs to beat Namosi tomorrow. We have the capability, we have the material that we that we hope that uh, it will uh, uh, match against Namosi with the far power and the blacks and the forwards. Yasawa will host Namosi at 3 p.m. at Nandobu Park. Philip and Aikaso, FBC Sports. Preparation has started for a combined T20 competition for men and women. This follows a successful T10 competition earlier this month in Suva, where police and Mode took out top honours. However, Cricket Fiji hopes to host another event next month after seeing the interest from their T10 Buller Bash. Chief Executive Alex Conrote says this will help in selecting a squad for the T20 World Cup qualifiers next year. Um, but we want to get the T20 started in order for us to uh, be better placed in uh, selecting a proper squad, uh, a, a big general squad. Uh, so by the end of the year, we have uh, all our high performance units uh, squads rolling. And then early next year, we'll move towards minimizing, cutting down on that squad to prepare for the tournaments next year. Uliasi Vunivalu and the Storm were relentless against the Roosters in round 14 of the NRL last night, inflicting a 24-6 defeat. The merciless side heaped more pain on uh, Trent Robinson's battered premiers, with three more key Roosters going down. Halfback uh, Lachlan Lamb and back rower Mitch uh, Oberson in the first half, then star playmaker Luke Keary in the second. 
That's it from Sports Tonight in uh, New Media. Google's Android phones will now start detecting earthquakes around the world. Details coming up. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. Good evening and welcome to the weather world. It's Friday, but the weather is not really in favor. Those clouds we spoke about yesterday really caught up with us today. Now, the fun part is that the weekend is here and this weather will actually let you sleep in. That is, if you have a day off. Now to the west, it's been an easy going here, few light showers, but hey, there's no better time to play in the mud than when it's raining. So on your rainy days like this, head to this geothermal hot springs that is just outside of Nandi. Eastwards from Pak Suva, you know when it's the start of the weekend, there comes rain, but at least but we, be, but we least bothered because it won't be around for long. And up north, showers will linger by tonight and into tomorrow. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough sea. Now turning to the tides, low tide at 8.38 p.m. with high tide at 2.59 a.m. Sunrise at 6.25. For tomorrow, weather should be fine and just enough for us to enjoy our day. Tomorrow's temps, Savu Savu will be cool at 28 degrees, while Lambasa will be a bit warm at 32. And looking further on to Sunday, another fun day in Stowe, so have a lovely one and take care. That's all the weather news from my end. Have a nice evening. It's back to the beautiful. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and False, we asked, who do you think will win the Punja's BOG title this weekend? My team, uh, Ba, will win the BOG because, uh, because of the young talents. Because, uh, as you know, Ba has a lot of young talents. And uh, this squad, uh, our coach, uh, Mr. Ronil uh, has put, will surely leave this title. Ba, a long time they're winning, eh? All the tournaments, like... I'm uh, predicting Ba will win because Ba match is very neat and clean game they play. I, I think Suva will win because they have prepared well. Uh, Suva team will uh, win the games because they're very disciplined and uh, a lot of support coming from Suva. Uh, Suva will win because they really are respected um, team. Recapping the main stories for tonight, head teacher and teacher sacked for corporal punishment. Police beef up surveillance in Nausori and Thumbuya relies on financial backers in leadership bid. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question we're asking, are you happy with the lifting of the Kawakawa and Donu ban? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our Friday shot of the day, last one for the week, and it's only fitting that Kilera Finau caught this gorgeous, gorgeous view as she stepped out of her office. And you can send us newsworthy pictures to fbcnews at fbc.com.fj by Facebook page at FBC News and our Twitter page at FBC underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, from the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Stay safe, BG. Bye for now. Bula FM, number 2 NSR. Bula FM, number 2 NSR.